Texans right now. I think we heard we're not sure. We're still learning. We're trying to figure this out, and there's not enough data to 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 work through um, some of their questions. That it's it's just a lot of unknowns, and until they can get like they've said a couple weeks in, by the time hopefully they get to uh, uh, um, Auto Club Speedway or beyond there, then maybe they can start um, being able to come up with some answers and generating enough data to to make start making some changes to the cars. Well, the competition package uh, for 2019 was not used in last week's uh, season opening in the day 2500, but a version of it will debut Sunday in Atlanta's. Uh, uh, the thing about it is it's an abrasive 1.54 mile quad oval. The lower horsepower, high downforce, high drag formula is designed to slow cars and bunch them together and create a more entertaining product. But Atlanta is an, is an anomaly to that in that its racing surface is one of the oldest in the series, and it was last week. Paved in 1997, and it is rough, it is bumpy. Uh, it quickly eats away and tires, and typically a handful it is, it is an abundance even for the veterans. I guess maybe in the simple term, Sunday's race may look not may look nothing like this, how the package races the rest of the season. Now, that's what NASCAR is really attempting to 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 accomplish here is that they're customizing and making small changes. Uh, depending on the track that they're going to. So what we see this weekend, we're not going to see next weekend at Vegas. And then we're not going to see it again at Auto Club. These changes are being made to to suit the racetrack and potentially change the racing uh, at each track. Now, now once we go back to, to Vegas in the fall, then, yeah, we can probably look back to some things that we see next week. Um, but, you know, in general... Um, NASCAR is trying to change the racing in all the tracks uh, as a whole, with the exception of the short tracks, which will um, not be running in, in these packages, and they'll get full horsepower within the motors. Um, so, so things that we've seen at a Richmond, uh, at a Dover, at Bristol, or Martinsville, um, those those things aren't going to change. We're we're not going to see any substantial differences between 2018 and 2019. Where we're going to see the differences, we're going to see them on these 1.5 mile racetracks, which have traditionally in the past been strung out racing. Um, dirty air would uh, create a, a, an environment in which the leader could be four, five, six, seven seconds ahead of the field within just a handful of laps. Um, you know, they're they're trying to bunch the field back up together yet again, and, and definitely when we go to Talladega and Daytona throughout the rest of the year, we, we're not uh, the, we're not going to see the style of racing that we saw last week, uh, and meaning that uh, the restrictor plates are going to be pulled off these cars and they're going to go with taper spacers all is same. Uh, we'll see pack style racing to some degree. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be like what we saw last week. I think this, we're going to see substantially different racing, which gives these drivers more control over the cars and over the engines that um, uh, going into Talladega, Daytona, uh, on some of these 1.5 mile racetracks throughout the rest of the season. Well, uh, Eric Armarola uh, wins his first poll since uh, Charlotte in 2012, his first ever in Atlanta. Uh, what are your thoughts about Eric Armarola on the poll, and obviously followed up by uh, Ricky Steinhaus Jr. there in the lineup for tomorrow? Um, I, I think we got. I think we got to look at the fact of what Ford is putting together as a package. Um, you know, the, these drivers are becoming increasingly um, competitive, more uh, competitive throughout the entire field of four drivers. Um, we, we've seen just a handful of drivers in the past couple of years, the Kevin Harvick's of the world, that have dominated the field, um, and we're seeing uh, Ford really coming to the good, um, coming to the cream of the crop. Penske Racing has been another one that has kind of dominated the Ford camp, but uh, for 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 Eric Almarola to get on the pole, I think it's um, it's a much needed again boost for him. Um, he he hasn't been to victory lane since an Xfinity Series race at Daytona, so he he um, he's definitely looking to turn the career around. And I think that with with Ford bringing the new Mustang to to the track, um, this is a potential that we're going to, as Kevin Harvick 
or no, I'm sorry, Joey Logano said was was asked about yesterday. Will we see the dominant cars that we saw in 2018? And he said no. He said we're going to probably see a variety of different winners uh, um, this year in in the Cup Series um, because of not only the package but the quality of the cars that we're seeing brought to the racetrack. And that's in, that's true. That Ford has just totally rebuilt their cars, their chassis from the ground up uh, for 2019 with this new Mustang package. Now, last week we talked a little bit about the curse of the Daytona 500 pole, if you will. I won't really call it a curse. One of the things that I, I noticed now that we go into Atlanta that uh, all the young drivers we saw up front at the beginning of the race at Daytona are nowhere to be found in the top ten. As as we as I mentioned, uh, you, you got Armanola, you got Ricky Stenhouse, you got Tim Boyer, Denny Hamlin, which is obviously the Daytona 500 champion of this year, Daniel Torres, Kyle uh, Kyle Busch, Kyle. Larson, Kirk Bush, uh, Martin Truex Jr., and Austin Dillon all round out the top 10. How come those younger drivers couldn't find their way in the top 10 in Atlanta like they were able to do at Daytona? I, I mean, it's, it's just been something that we've seen in the past that uh, going into Daytona, these teams will set the cars up for, those, for that single qualifying run to maximize speed. And then when they got to the twins races or the dual races, and then they got to the uh, the beyond that, um, the cars that had flat out speed were not the cars that were contending because they had no long run speed, no long run um, speed, and no long run handling. And that's been true over the last couple of years at Daytona, as we've seen these very young drivers um, put themselves on the pole: Danica Patrick, Austin Dillon. Um, Alex Bowman, uh, William Byron, etc., um, have have put themselves on the pole, and, and a lot of that is indicative of the fact that they're setting these cars up for that qualifying run, and not necessarily for long run speeds or or long run handling or pack racing that we see throughout the field. Not in, not that they're not fast, but they they're just they're the cars aren't set up to run the races. They're set up to run the qualifying. Well, it's uh, let's uh, kind of go through the races this weekend. Obviously, we've got the Ultimate Tailgating Truck uh, Series uh, with the brand new trucks. Uh, interesting to see how that's going to going to uh, pan out today. What are your thoughts on the truck race, sir? I think it'll be just. Uh, I mean, last week, it, you know, there, it was it was a fairly exciting race, even though that we had a majority of the field that was wrecked out in, in that, and only about seven. Six, seven, eight drivers left, really running at the end of the end of the race. Um, it was a fairly exciting race, and, and I think you're, you're just going to continue to see that this weekend. These trucks just push so much air; they're just bricks, and they just push this air, and and, and they're able to to do things that some of the other cars, the Xfinity or the Monster Energy cars, just don't have the opportunity to do, just because the aerodynamics of the cars and the side drafting and the the arrow pushes that sometimes they get in these uh, these other cars. Um, they they produce some of the best racing that I think we see on the circuit as a whole. And uh, no matter where they go, um, they don't seem to need the tweaks or the arrow uh, effects to to produce good racing. We just see good racing in general out of that series, and we'll just continue to see that again this this weekend. Um, you know, we'll see a lot of side by sides. Sure, we're going to see some runoffs in two or three seconds. Um, but uh, but overall, these these trucks are going to put on a good show later on today. Providing, I mean, we've got lights here at Atlanta. They've already got the lights turned on here. Um, so um, you know, if we don't get this thing running after lunchtime, hopefully, we can get this thing uh, running later on tonight. Well, certainly you've got the Xfinity race that comes up first. As you mentioned, you're, you're dealing with some weather uh, elements. Hopefully you're able to get everything in. But let's uh, assume that everything runs on schedule. You've got the Riani 250 in the Xfinity series. Talk to us about that race. Well, just, just coming up right now, it's um, actually funny that we're talking about this, but the truck series has just canceled qualifying um, for, for later on today. So, um just throwing that out there real quick. Are you with us, Steve? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm still here. I just said that you know the truck series has just canceled <laughs> qualifying for all, for today also. So um, 
I just wanted to get that out there while we were still talking about the trucks. Okay, so they're going to start then, I guess, obviously, it's, it's still early in the season, but they're obviously going to start by points, uh, where, where they're at currently with points. Yes, yeah, they're, they're going to go back to a world book, start up by points, and uh, that I don't have it in front of me, so well, hopefully you're sure oh, that's right. have that. Oh, that's okay. right. Well, the uh, Xfinity race uh, uh, kicks off at 2 o'clock uh, uh, on uh, Fox Sports 1, and PRN's got the radio call. I know you, you'll be covering it quite extensively with Speedway Digest, uh, but what are we looking for in the Xfinity Rally 250 race there today? Um, tire wear is going to be a concern for those guys. Um, I think it's... A- I think it's interesting that Cole Custer is is going to run up front, um, or he's going to start from pole for this for this later on today. Um, need some guys out there that that are making changes um, this year. Um, Michael Annette, uh, uh another driver, I believe he's going to start like eighth or something like that, if I remember correctly. I don't have the lineup right in front of me, but I was quickly browsing through it. Um, you know, he won last week, got his first uh, Xfinity Series uh, victory in Daytona. So he's riding a pretty high momentum this week coming into Atlanta, and um, for that team to be able to uh, uh, to to continue moving forward, I think they need to continue having good runs. Um, they they've not been the best team, even though that they're entering the motorsports equipment. Um, Michael and that hasn't put the performance together, and I think that um, you know he he really needs to to be able to to shift. The, the conversation onto that, and I think he started that last week. Um, this week, you know, start in the top ten yet again. Um, so, you know, um, that team uh, looking to continue moving the momentum forward. Talking with Steve Wilson, our official NASCAR contributor. He's t- calling us from down in Atlanta, a uh, rainy, hot Atlanta, I guess, uh, t- today. Uh, real quickly, before I let you go, fantasy uh, uh, players, uh, I am one of them. I did not get my invite until a little bit later on, so I was not able to get involved in uh, 8500 for the fantasy. I think there's a conspiracy there. I don't know. We'll have to make up a lot of time. But either which way, uh, as you get your fantasy lineup, uh, what are your thoughts just in the box? Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm going to play with the the drivers that played the last two days and said they don't know. Um, and, um, I think it's, it's it's a big old dartboard out there. Pick pick somebody um, that that <clears throat> can navigate these tracks, um, but also um, be mindful in the fact that. Um, there's just so many unknowns, and until we put 40 cars on the red track, we're really not going to know what's going to happen. So um, uh, if you want me to pick somebody, I'm just going to go with the defending champion of this race, Kevin Harvick. Uh, he won last year on tire strategy, but he said, that, again, he said that they didn't think this would work this year. But I'm going to just go with him again because I think he's just as good as anybody else on these 1.5-mile racetrack. Well, I absolutely picked Eric Almodola to be on the pole. No, I'm hitting. I didn't even put him anywhere in my radar. So, yeah, it's any, any man's any man's game. I know you got a hard stop here, sir. I know you're down there in Atlanta. I cover in the race. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom for us as we go into race weekend this weekend? Um, just watch the race tomorrow and see how it is. Take it. Don't, just don't take it at face value because you know NASCAR is continuously tweaking these cars and trying to get these cars to. Uh, um, you know, uh, to race. Um, not that they're not racing already, but they're trying to put on the best quality racing that they can. And just one race tomorrow isn't going to be indicative of what we see throughout the entire season. Give these, give these cars a chance. Give this package a chance. Give it a couple weeks for these teams and drivers to figure out what's going on within the cars and gather data. And then by the time that we start getting throughout the rest season, we're going to see better quality, which hopefully we'll see better quality racing as NASCAR continues to tweak on these cars. Steve Wilson of Speedway Digest. Where can people find your work in your masterpiece, sir? You can follow us at Speedway Digest on Twitter, facebook.com, forward slash Speedway Digest, speedwaydigest.com. All right, buddy. You have yourself a good weekend. We'll talk more to you. Thanks. You do. Take care. All right. Steve Wilson of Speedway Digest. Uh, apologize if we had some feedback issues there, uh, but when you're when you're on a remote and you're out the track, you just kind of go. Self-present. 
say. I'll be right back. It's just me and you, Mo. The BS Sports Show had something come up, not able to join us today. So, but we're going to be talking about sex, the New England. 